Welcome back to my channel for my YouTube video, which is on nighttime photography, as well as a new feature which has been in some Sony SLR and some of the translucent and mirrorless cameras for a few years now. And it's actually called focus peaking. So I'm gonna kind of show you a little bit of a quick tutorial on those two different things. So right now I'm actually in my manual focusing mode. So what that does is it enables my focus peaking feature but you can see right here, I have it set to high and I have my color set to red so that way I can see it. So what this does is if you're actually in manual focusing mode, you're able to actually see what's going to be in focus. So anywhere you see the red, that's everything that's actually gonna be in focus. Now you of course can't really tell too much as far as since I'm using a wide angle lens and I have my aperture pretty high, so everything's pretty much gonna be in focus for the most part. But it certainly is a very useful feature if you're doing something with portraits. If you're using a large telephoto lens such as a 70 to 200, 85 millimeter prime, or a 50 millimeter, it's very useful for that. Or even macro shots if you're doing things with the 50 or 30 millimeter macro. So just a very nice feature to have if you're one of those that love to use the manual focus feature. And especially if you're a videographer and use this camera for that as well. It's very useful so that way you ac actually know what's in focus. Now with nighttime photography, it's sort of kind of the same as if you're doing sunsets or something like that. Because it's kind of much the same type of effect. Now the way that you want to go about doing your nighttime photography is that you want to make sure you of course have a tripod. Because that's going to be very useful for you. Especially if you're trying to get night trails to where you have an interstate like where I'm over and you're trying to catch the light trails. Now the way that I actually catch light trails is simply by using a very slow shutter speed. That's actually pretty much all there is to it. Now of course you can control how that effect is going to be by the actual speed of your shutter. Whether you want it to go faster or if you want it to just go slower. So in this case I'm actually doing HDR and I'm doing three frames. So once I actually merge that together it's going to be a really nice effect. And you'll see those images at the end of this video. So that last image, you can see where the light trails are starting to form because it's taking such a long shutter that that light has a little bit of time to travel. So that way I don't actually miss my sunset. I'm gonna make this video real short, but hopefully this was something very helpful for anyone that's trying to do landscape and nighttime photography. So until next time, I'll see you guys later. So here's our first photo, which is our fastest of the three photos that I'm gonna show you. So this one was taken at a sixth of a second. And as you can see, some of the light trails starting to form, it's still not as well-defined as it's gonna be in some of the later frames that you're gonna see in this video. So this is our actual underexposed image. Now, because I'm doing HDR is the reason why I'm doing different brackets, but at least with this, you can actually see the differences between the different frames and how your exposure or your actual shutter speed changes the actual way that your photo will actually come out for if you're trying to capture light trails. So this second photo is our neutral or middle photo. This one was taken at 0.6 of a second and you can kind of start seeing that the light trails are starting to get a little bit more well-defined. Because we slowed down the shutter a little bit more, we're starting to get that light travel a little bit more extensive than what we did in the first frame. Here in this third frame is where we have light streaks just happening all over the place because our shutter this time was at two and a half seconds. So that allowed so much time for cars to travel while the camera was being exposed to that light that it captured all of those light streaks from the cars as they were moving. So as you can see, you can't see the cars now at this point but you still see their lights. And that's because of that, that movement, that motion to where it eliminates your actual moving subject, but you can still see those light trails. So this is where you kind of start seeing to where the faster your shutter speed is, the more that you're gonna bring to life those light trails. 
So just play around with it a little bit to kind of get them to the point that you want in your photos. So hopefully this video is very informative for you if you were someone that's trying to do nighttime photography or capture light trails. So be sure to connect with me on my social networks, especially my Instagram at Professor Hines. And remember to thumbs up this video if you liked it. And thanks for subscribing to my channel. Thank you.